Today we're embarking on a fascinating journey into the homes that might not make the cover of luxury magazines but are rich in stories and survival strategies. Each corner, filled to the brim with belongings, whispers, stories of necessity and creativity. From the living room stacked with memories to the kitchen where space is precious, these homes teach us the art of making the most of what we have. Join me as we explore the charm and challenges of each cluttered space. And just so you know, this exploration is done with the utmost respect. Having grown up in poverty myself, I share these stories from a place of understanding and experience. First thing you will notice in a poor man's home is clutter. Imagine a world where every inch is a storage space. Welcome to the kingdom of clutter. In this realm, every nook and cranny is packed to the brim, a testament to the inventive use of limited space. Here, the concept of less is more is flipped on its head. More is definitely more. Why does this happen, you ask? Well, when you're pinching pennies, every item feels like an asset. Throwing something away? Unthinkable. It might just come in handy one day. This landscape of labyrinthine stacks of magazines, old electronics that have seen better days, and boxes filled with mystery contents is not just about saving money. It's about security, the comfort of knowing you have something should you ever need it. Cluttering, in essence, is the art of potential. Every item is a promise of future usefulness, making space a luxury that's often willingly sacrificed. Next up, furniture that's too loved to ever say goodbye. This chair has seen more family dramas than the telly. Indeed, in many homes where every penny counts, furniture isn't just a household item, it's a silent witness to decades of laughter, tears, and everything in between. So why do these battered sofas and creaky chairs stick around long past their prime? It's a mix of emotional and financial decisions. For starters, there's the sentimental value. That old recliner isn't just a chair, it's where Grandad used to tell his wild fishing stories, or where Mum rocked you to sleep. Tossing it out? Easier said than done. Financially, the equation is straightforward, but touching. New furniture costs money, often more than what's feasible on a tight budget. Repairing might seem a viable option, but even that can add up in cost. Plus, there's a certain resilience in making do with what one has, a testament to the enduring human spirit. So the next time you spot a saggy couch, remember, it's not just furniture, it's a fortress of memories. Moving on, poor folks buy lots of cheap, low-quality items. Why buy for quality when you can buy for quantity? Imagine walking into a store, the shelves are overflowing, not with top-tier brands, but with items that promise the same allure at a fraction of the price. It's tempting, isn't it? For many, the choice isn't about luxury, it's about necessity. When the budget is tight, quantity often outweighs quality. It's about stretching every dollar, and if that means buying a blender that might only last a year, so be it. After all, a $20 blender that works is better than a $200 one that's just a dream. This approach isn't just about surviving, it's about managing. In homes where every penny counts, these low-cost items are not merely purchases, they're tactical decisions. Tools that, while not enduring, serve their purpose when most needed, but sometimes it's all about looking rich on a budget. Number four, poor people buy cheap imitations of luxury brands to project an image of wealth without the high cost. Who needs Gucci when you've got Gucci? Welcome to the grand parade of knockoffs where the logos are familiar but just a smidgen off. In this fascinating world, the drive to flaunt a designer label without burning a hole in the wallet leads many to embrace the art of imitation. Now, let's ponder the psychology here. It's a blend of aspiration and desperation. One moment, you're strutting down the high street feeling like a million bucks. The next, you're hoping no one notices that your Dolce and Banana label is a clever ruse. It's about stretching the dollar while stretching the truth about your fashion sources. But let's not be too harsh. After all, everyone loves a good masquerade, don't they? It's about playing the part without paying the price. And in the grand theater of life, who can resist a costume change, especially when it's budget friendly? From faux luxury to real bargains, let's check out the sales stockpile. Five, the poor stock up on sales. When is too much too much? Never at a sale. Imagine a cavernous pantry, shelves bowing under the weight of tinned beans, pasta packets, and more toothpaste tubes than a family could use in a year. This is the quintessential scene during the sale season in homes where every penny counts. 
Why this obsession with stockpiling? It's a cocktail of necessity and a dash of the thrill that comes from snagging a bargain. For many, sales are not just opportunities, they're a strategy. It's about stretching the budget, sure, but there's also an element of fear. The fear of running out, the fear of missing out on a good deal. This leads to buying in bulk, which often crosses into the realm of excessive. In these homes, the sale flyers are poured over more thoroughly than the morning newspaper. Every discount is dissected, every offer evaluated. The result? Closets stuffed with unopened items, some of which may never see the light of day. And where there's a bargain, beware the uninvited guests. Six, in most poor homes you will find pests. No purchase necessary, pests included free of charge. In the less affluent corners of our homes, where every space is a storage unit and every crack a potential home, pests find a paradise. It's not merely about untidiness, but rather the perfect storm of clutter and decay that invites these uninvited guests. Imagine for a moment a room where the walls tell tales of dampness and the floors sing songs of crumbs and spills. Here pests don't just visit, they come to thrive. From the common cockroach to the audacious ant, these critters capitalize on the chaos. Clutter acts like a magnet for these pests, providing endless nooks and crannies for them to breed and multiply. And let's not overlook the structural woes of these homes, cracks in the walls, gaps in the windows and doors that don't quite fit. Each imperfection is an open invitation to more guests. Speaking of stretching resources, ever heard of watered-down soap? Seven. In poor homes, you will most likely find diluted products. Why use 100% of a product when you can make it last twice as long? Ah, the art of dilution, a true testament to the ingenuity found in homes where every penny counts. It's not just about making do, it's about making things last. Take dish soap, for example. It's a common sight to see a bottle of dishwashing liquid watered down to eke out every last sud. This isn't just thriftiness, it's a strategy. By diluting soap, families can stretch a single bottle over weeks, perhaps even months, turning what is a necessity into a lasting commodity. But it's not just about soap. This practice extends to shampoos, cleaning liquids, and even condiments. It reflects a broader theme of resourcefulness and resilience under financial strain. These are homes where waste is not an option and every drop of every product must justify its existence. As we've seen today, necessity really is the mother of invention. It's been quite the journey through the inventive corridors of necessity. As we've ventured from room to room, what's become strikingly clear isn't just a narrative of scarcity, but one of unyielding resourcefulness. The homes we've peeked into today, cluttered and cramped as they may be, are brimming with the relentless resilience of those who make the most out of the least. These spaces tell stories of adaptation and survival. From furniture that refuses to retire to the clever stocking up during sales, each corner of these homes teaches us something about the art of stretching what one has beyond its intended capacity. It's about making ends meet, not just through frugality, but through an inventive spirit that can turn even the humblest of items into a treasure. So next time you find yourself about to throw something away, remember the homes we visited today. Perhaps that item too has a little more life left in it, a bit more to give. Liked what you saw? Don't forget to smash that like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more eye-opening content.